This video basically started because of a comment I saw online. This person was saying that it must be nice for me because I live in Denver and I can go to all these off-road shops or camping places and look at the product before I buy it. I thought about it for a while and I thought, there's actually a lot of stuff in my bag that's not from a specific off-road shop. Some of this is from a chain store. I basically came up with the idea for this series where I'm gonna be going to retail locations. Pretty much everybody is gonna have near them. The first one in this series is gonna be Harbor Freight. So I'm gonna be pulling from a list I made earlier. I'm gonna go and see if I can find all of this stuff in my local Harbor Freight. And switch to my phone because I don't wanna look like a lunatic carrying this thing around. So let's go ahead and switch to the phone. All right, you can see this is a ditch pod with side shooting lights. Ditch lights are actually the first uh, sort of off-road light I would recommend. I know a lot of people go light bars, but I think these are much, much better. Especially with the side shot on these, you could kind of aim these forward and still get a pretty wide light as well. Overland Engineer has a video on this. Um, he installed these himself and um, seems to like them pretty good. You should go check out that video. These things look super bright. Spot beam right here, and then this is the flood beam. I would actually go with the spot because the side ones are floods anyway. There's also this, um, this other one here. Um, I don't really know much about this, but it's only $24. It's a pretty good deal. It does not come with the wiring harness. You have to buy that separately. But yeah, it's a uh, thousand lumens, pretty bright light. And uh, this is also a spot beam, but it doesn't have the side shooting pods. I don't know much about it. I would just say go with the first ones that I talked about. I also thought this was pretty interesting here for 30 bucks. They've got these rock lights. I've not run these. I don't really know anyone that has. I think Overland Engineer is about to, but I want to install these on the next build I do. And um, I thought these were pretty cool. They're really cheap, um, 320 lumens, but basically they're just kind of to see rocks when you're off-roading at night. I would just probably use them for camping. There's also this a light bar, not really my style, but um, 10,000 lumens, that's pretty insane. Uh, this Apex winch uh, with the synthetic, that's 12,000 pounds. That's actually more than my winch holds. Again, Overland Engineer is running this one. Uh, I got to talk to him about it in person, and he seems to really like it. And it's pretty cheap, and like I said, it holds more weight than mine. There's also this fair lead here, which is basically, it's basically just a piece of metal that stops the rope from rubbing on the bumper. Yeah, you definitely need these if you have a bumper. There's the steel cable one as well, uh, holds about the same amount of weight, but I would recommend swapping it for this synthetic if you're gonna go that route or if you already have it, but just go with the regular one, that's fine. Um, this is also another one that I recommend for everybody to carry with them. Just a D-ring shackle. This looks pretty much like mine. Um, I carry in the rig all the time and basically just helps you get out of a situation. Um, there's also this one right here, which holds more weight, I believe, but I really don't know much about this one. If you need more weight, go with that one. There's a recovery strap here. I actually have this one myself. Uh, it works fine. You know, it's just a recovery strap and it works. And there's also a tree saver that's supposed to be here, but I'm guessing they're out. So another thing that I would recommend everyone to get if you have a winch, especially, is this um, snatch block. It basically helps you when you're winching alone or you know helps other people winch you out if you're stuck. There's also this high lift jack, which these are pretty dangerous. I don't really don't like them, but if you have a lifted truck and you need to get it up, that's how you're gonna have to do it. 
At the time of filming, the they were out of these jerry cans, but these are really cool if you need more gas. So funny enough, I was actually running these for a while. Um, they're kind of weird and you can use them. Um, they just kind of use these little pins up here, uh, which are pretty cheap. And then you just take those and put them through here and they go right in your hitch. But I would recommend this one right here. This is a lot more similar to the one I have. And it's a lot more similar to the ones that people actually use. It's a normal size D-ring. And I know that it's rated to hold at least my truck. So this one I could not find in store, but I talked to some people on some forums who've used this and you could basically use this for storage for anything you're bringing off road. You can also connect a rooftop tent to it. So it's going to be taller than your truck, which uh, is not great for aerodynamics. It'll do the job for only 200 bucks. Whereas if you go to like a rap company, you'll end up spending maybe a thousand or something like that. So I know that um, this is almost an exact replica of these ones here on Amazon. And I know people that are running these personally, um, very similar, but yeah, it, it, it makes the tent really tall. But if you got some long stuff to carry, it's a, a pretty good option for you. There's also, you know, miscellaneous stuff here, like this uh, tire gauge, which I did have for a little bit. I, I kind of lost it, so I don't know where it is, but it worked. It was fine and it did the job. Um, and then also, yeah, another tire gauge. This is fine. I would get the other one though. All right, so we're moving into camping supplies here. This is a hammock. You could actually use this to camp in. I have a Eno hammock, kind of like this one. I used to camp in this and really didn't bring a tent or anything like that with me. It's a really cheap way to camp if you don't have a rooftop tent or even a ground tent. There's also this foldable chair here I saw. It kind of folds down small. It might work for you. I don't know how good the quality is, but it uh, it looks fine. Kind of big though. I've seen these used as uh, rock lights. So if you want to go for those, go for them. But I think they're kind of useless for what we're talking about. Uh, this one right here is 588 lumens. Um, it's pretty cheap. It has a couple modes and I really like it. I, I don't have this one personally, but I've seen people online highly recommend this. Um, it's got a long run time and it's supposed to shoot pretty far. And yeah, it's got this flashing mode for emergencies, but it's pretty cheap and it comes in camo as well. If you want to lose that in the ground for some reason. A little bit step up here, a little bit more money, but 3,700 lumens. That's insane. Um, I don't know why I didn't buy this at the time. I really should have gone back and bought this. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I've got a lot of flashlights, so maybe I don't need it, but this thing's really bright and pretty cheap. There's also this headlamp here. Um, it's not a lot of lumens, not crazy, but it'll do the job. You just strap this on and you can, uh, you know, walk through camp and not have to hold anything in your hands. And, you know, if you've got stuff in your hands and you're walking around camp, you don't want to be holding a flashlight. So this is pretty good. A step up from that is going to be this one. This, this looks a lot more like the one I have from REI, but it's 900 lumens, which is a huge step up. And I think it's made for, you know, construction workers, stuff like that. But you can use it for a campsite. I've seen people use these before. They look kind of silly, but I mean, it's, they all look silly, so whatever. So this one is a nice little light. Uh, personally, I've already got a lantern, so I wouldn't get this, but I think this is pretty good, 1200 lumens. And you can set this down and illuminate uh, a lot of your campsite. And it's got four modes and it's not very expensive. 
this is a pretty cheap option. Um, I, I can't attest to the quality here on this one, but it looks fine. Now I use these a lot. Uh, they, they actually gave these away for free at one point in time with purchase. And I have a bunch of these for some reason. And I like them. They're magnet and uh, you can hang them up. There's also these ones. I have this as well. Um, I use these in my closet, funny enough, but uh, I have used these at campsites before. I actually ended up getting these right here, which are $5.99 and they're magnetic and they can point in any direction. I think it's really cool uh, for, especially when you're at camp and you wanna be able to see the ground, you don't wanna trip on stuff. You can magnetize it to your car, just stick it up there and point it down at the ground. So another one I actually do already have before I shot this video, this is paracord. There's so many uses for this at a campsite. There's also this glow in the dark one that might be useful if you're, you know, using it as a stake and uh, you don't want to trip over it at night. Just four bucks. So I still thought this one was pretty cool. Um, it's just a little utility knife and really you don't have to worry about it being sharpened because you can just replace it with, with the blades that come with it or just buy new blades. They're pretty easy to replace. And they actually come recommended pretty highly from someone that I trust really small but that's all you need there's no pocket clip it does come with this little ball chain i think five dollars that's a really solid thing to add to your edc if you want a utility knife something you can swap the blades out on this one actually has a window break and a seat belt cutter that i actually ended up buying this one i really i really thought it was a cool cool one i, I saw some stuff online about it and so far i've been pretty happy with it All right guys, so this is to break the window if you ever get stuck. And this is to cut your seatbelt. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. You guys ready? Free breakfast Baconator. It's a pretty good deal. I'm gonna use this. This other one's just a cheap $9 pocket knife. Again, the same guy reviewed it and, and he said he'd recommend something a little bit nicer, but if you're just on a shoestring budget, check this out. Definitely on phosphor bronze washers. You have a liner lock here that looks like it's about 50% lock up. Actable knife, $8.97. This knife right here is $9. But yeah, it's a uh, pretty solid. I mean, if I didn't already buy the other one, I think I would have bought this one as a nice backup knife. Uh, you know, $10, you're not breaking the bank. So I don't even know they had these, but they have cast iron here and it's only $24 for a few of them. And that's actually how I cook at campsites. I just drop these in the fire, really. I, I don't use a stove or anything. I think these are really cool and cheap. So this next part of the list is just kind of some miscellaneous stuff around the vehicle, just kind of maintenance or really something for safety. Like this first one here, which is a blind spot mirror. I actually use these and I very, very much recommend these for anybody. I've got a video talking about those. Um, there's also these microfiber cloths, which you can clean your car or just bring them to camp and kind of clean up or whatever. Emergency rain. Yeah, I bring these all the time. Anytime I do anything outdoors because you never know the weather. Duct tape, always. You know, you can get that really anywhere, but if you're already here, might as well. Jumper cables, definitely, definitely carry those. I would uh, recommend that. And yeah, there's just generally a lot of tools and just cases and stuff like that, so. So guys, I was able to find pretty much everything I set out to find. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that you guys go out there and spend all of your money on overland gear at Harbor Freight, but I'm just saying that if you live in a town where there's no off-road shops, outdoor gear shops, then you could actually check out some local places aren't gonna have locally made products. Like obviously a lot of the stuff at Harbor Freight is gonna be made in China. So if you really wanna like 
buy, US made, probably not the place to find it. But yeah, it's definitely an option and you can try things out and return them if you don't like them. All of the stuff that I've used from them so far, I really like. But yeah, even while I was there, I came up with the idea to build an awning with a lot of the stuff that they have there. It's not gonna be US made, it's not gonna be local, but it's gonna be stuff that you can use. And as long as you don't buy like electronics without looking at reviews, you should be fine at Harbor Freight. With that being said, guys, if I missed anything, I apologize. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, hit a like below. If you like what I'm doing, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.